Hi there, you are watching a video of piping systems in industrial plants. As mentioned before, the main function of a piping system is to interconnect the different equipment in a plant. Some particular interconnecting details for the main equipment in a plant will be discussed. In a shell and tube heat exchanger, there is a thermal exchange between two fluids. The interconnection of pipes must be carried out respecting the process requirements and, in turn, minimizing the loads transmitting by the pipes to the exchanger's nozzles. The main design considerations for shell and tube heat exchangers are the following. The arrangement of the nozzles is given in the diagrams and the PNID. In stacked equipment, it is recommended not to stack more than three shells. The space in front of the exchanger should be free to allow for the tube bundle structure. In the case of stacked and interconnected exchangers, as in the case of heat exchangers operating in series or parallel, nozzles to be connected will be located as close as possible to avoid excessive stress or expansion differences between shells. The location of nozzles in heat exchangers generally complies with the following rules. The fluid to be heated generally enters the equipment at the bottom and exit at the top, circulating through the shell side or the tube side. The opposite occurs with the fluid to be cooled, generally enters the equipment from the top, circulating through the tube side or the shell side. Vapors are better evacuated with this arrangement, both for the fluid being heated and for the one being cooled. Nozzles are arranged so that fluids passing through the exchanger are in counter current, so that one fluid is heated from the bottom up and the other fluid cools from the top down. It is critical and essential that the space in front of the exchanger is free to facilitate extraction of the tube bundle. Likewise, the pipes reaching the rear of the equipment must leave free space for the rear head to be hoisted. As shown on the screen, there is no single acceptable configuration for the interconnection of this type of equipment. The designer must follow the operation and maintenance requirements and at the same time come up with the most economical designs possible. Air coolers are usually located near other types of equipment, which in turn contributes to the flexibility of the system. The nozzle layout of air coolers is directly related with the operation of the equipment and therefore they cannot be very easily relocated. The first thing to know about prior the piping layout is the configuration and operating principle of an air cooler. Mainly, the designer must know the number of passes of the equipment and the number of nozzles in the heaters. The main layout considerations for this type of equipment are They are usually located on structures or platforms. The designer does not locate the nozzles, they are prefixed. The nozzles define the operation of the equipment. And when possible, air coolers should be designed with two passes. This way the inlet and outlet nozzles are at the same end. If there are several nozzles, a correct flow distribution must be ensured. 
avoid transmitting loads to the equipment's nozzles and do not place nozzles above the equipment prevents the removal of the tube bundle. Along with compressors and fractionating towers, this type of equipment, centrifugal pumps, is one of the most difficult to develop a piping arrangement for. With regards to centrifugal pumps intake connecting piping, it is essential to ensure the pump suction. In other words, comply with the required MPSH. The length of the suction pipe should be minimized as much as possible to avoid cavitation. Do not place lines above the pumps, it difficults maintenance activities. At the same time, provide at least one meter free around the pumps. This facilitates the piping arrangement greatly. For centrifugal pumps, consider an elevation for the suction center line of 750 mils minimum. And if possible, locate discharge nozzles of pump trains aligned. If it is absolutely necessary to place an inlet elbow on the suction side of the pump, it should be a long radius elbow. The straight section before the suction flange of the pipe should have a minimum length of 5 times the pipe diameter. To avoid the formation of air or gas pockets that may lead to cavitation, in the case of lines coming from under the pump, eccentric reducers must be placed with the flat side up. For suction lines coming from above, since there is no problem with the formation of air pockets, the eccentric reducer can be placed with the flat side of the reduction up or down. However, it is preferable to place the flat side up to facilitate drainage. The interconnection of compressors is very complex mainly due to the fact that they are very sensitive to loads and changes in the boundary conditions. An inadequate design results in equipment failure and outage in a very short period of time. Generally, compressors can be located inside buildings or outdoors. The location of this equipment will depend mainly on the maintenance requirements. The compressor suction and discharge lines should be as short as possible. In turn, the suction and discharge pipes will have the least amount of direction changes as possible. And finally, the suction line will slope towards the opposite side to the compressor. It is convenient to trace the suction line of the equipment with saturated steam. Condensates must not enter the equipment. A check valve in the equipment discharge line should be installed. And to finalize with the design considerations for compressors, for reciprocating compressor it is required to control vibrations. Loads transmitted to the equipment's nozzles will be minimum. The arrangement of piping in pressure vessels is one of the simplest cases with the exception of fractionating towers, of course. The following principles apply to fractionating towers, reactors, separators and accumulators. Interconnecting lines indicating in the PNID and in the plot plan should be followed. In towers, lines should be designed as close to the equipment as possible. Support lines on the equipment if possible. 
The height of the equipment depends on the NPSH of the pump and the piping arrangement, of course. This arrangement will suffer many changes, so the designer should be able to anticipate all these changes. The instrument will be located far from the turbulence. At the same time, process nozzles should be located near the tangent lines of the equipment, preferably near the fixed saddle. This warranties that the pipes are not affected by thermal expansion. In many cases, pipes must be supported on the equipment. For example, when the equipment is away from the pipe rack, is installed in open field or, or such. Vertical equipment, such as fractionating towers, are generally more complex when it comes to the piping design. Fractionating towers represent one of the greatest challenges for a piping designer, mainly due to the process requirements, the number of pipes and nozzles, and the limited space in the equipment.